Antlers are the best understood of the four kinds of ruminant headgear. There's been a lot of research on them because they're regenerating, they grow back every year, and that makes them useful for biomedical applications. People are studying them to understand how bone regenerates and try to, to come up with ways that we might be able to help um, bone regeneration in, in people who've had uh, injuries or um, also understanding the way that the skin on top of the antler grows very quickly can help us understand how to better grow skin for burn victims and create better grafts. Horns are the second best understood of the four kinds of ruminant headgear and horns are probably the most familiar to most people. Because we see horns in all kinds of animals we're most familiar with, cattle and goats and sheep, um, as well as the diversity of African antelope. So horns are interesting because they're not shed every year, they grow throughout the animal's life and they're made out of keratin, the same material that fingernails and hair are made from. Next are giraffe ossicones. They're very interesting and they're very poorly understood because there's so few giraffes in captivity and to properly understand one of these structures and how it grows and develops you have to have a, a series of individuals through um, from um, before birth all the way to adult, adulthood. Um, they look like horns but they're entirely covered by skin with hair. There's no horny substance like you see with real horns, true horns like you see in cattle or sheep and goats. Pronghorn antelope um, are the last group, and they're the ones that are most interesting to me. They're a uniquely North American group. They're the symbol of the American Society of Mammalogists. And they have the, the pronghorns that are grown and shed each year. But when we look at the modern animal, the soft tissue, the horn that's shed every year, has the two prongs, but the bone of the animal only has one of them. So um, we don't understand completely how the two prongs that we see in the living animal soft tissue relate to the two prongs we see in the bones of these fossil relatives.